Ed Smith, The Greatness of God's Word by Ed Smith. God bless you. It is a great privilege to be able to speak God's Word and teach God's Word. And uh, I really enjoyed, again, this subject. And uh, what I am going to share on today is our need to rely on God's reliability. A lot of this is probably going to be very familiar to you and, and uh, might seem repetition. I tend to be simple in my application of the word, and I like to keep it simple. And I like to be reminded of the simplicity of the word. In order to function as a child of God, we must believe who God says we are in Christ. God determined this new reality, and now we must persuade ourselves of it, of this new reality of Christ in us with God's word. If we do not make up our minds that it, who we are in Christ, is true, the old nature of the flesh will continue to dominate our thinking and our walk. Our acceptance before God is in Christ and his Christ's accomplishments. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So our acceptance before God is in Christ and his accomplishments. And we need to continue to rely on God's reliability, reminding ourselves that God is reliable, that we can rely on God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you have to bear with me here. My eyes are blurry. It's that old age. <laughs> All right. Verse 30 of chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. But of him, God, are you in Christ Jesus? who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Through God's wisdom, Christ is made unto us righteousness. We're right before God and we're sanctified. We're set apart and we are redeemed. I'm going to read this verse in the New American Standard. I like how it says it here, but by his God's doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became unto us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Again, our function as a child of God, we must believe who God says we are in Christ. So let's go to. Psalms, the book of Psalms, and we're going to go to Psalm 37. God's word is reliable. And I'm reminded of Romans chapter 10, verse 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Absolutely. It's absolutely a promise of God that we shall be saved when we confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. It is absolutely God's desire for us to rely on him and to trust in him. I'm looking for Psalm chapter 37. Psalm chapter 37, and in verse 25, a very familiar verse, I have been young, and now I'm older, yeah, gray hair and everything, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread, it's a promise of God that we can rely on, we can take it to the bank. One of the things that I have been dwelling on and looking at lately is just a, a really great principle in God's word when God instructs and explains the marriage relationship. 
So you have it in the marriage relationship and God explains it in, um, in Genesis, you know, where he says to cleave, the, the man is to cleave unto the wife. So in the definition of cleave for the world or in the Webster's dictionary, the word cleave, if you have a cleaver, you know, most people know what a meat cleaver is. A cleave, to cleave, it's to cut, to cut or to separate. But God's definition of cleave is to bind, to mend, to mold. And I like that, that word cleave, you know, where a man leaves his mother and father and he cleaves unto his wife. That word cleave is a, a binding. You know, we are to cleave as, as men and women being married in the marriage relationship. We cleave unto one another. Well, you have to do the cleaving. It's a way, it's, a, it's, it's completely different than the world's definition. You know, the world's definition, if you cleave, you, you cut, it's a cut, it's a separation. You know, and a meat cleaver is a big piece of metal. And I, I was looking for one today so I could have a visual, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a big knife and it's, it's for cutting and separating the bone. But God's definition is that we cleave, that word cleave is we cleave unto the wife as men. We cleave, we bind, you know, and that's what we need to do in our life as we walk with God, as we rely on God. We need to cleave unto God's word. We need to take the time to bind the word in our heart and in our life and get to know our Heavenly Father and rely on God's reliability. Let's go to second corinthians second corinthians chapter nine god is absolutely reliable and it's simply up to us to continue to rely remind ourselves of god's reliability second corinthians chapter nine See, God's faithfulness and his reliability are clear and certain realities. God's faithfulness and his reliability are clear and certain realities. He is faithful and he's reliable. One of the greatest challenges which we face as Christian believers is learning to rely on God's reliability and continue to rely on God's reliability. This is a fantastic set of scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So what do we read? What do we learn of this verse? You know, if you want to abound, if you want to reap, if you want to reap bountifully, what do you have to do? You have to sow bountifully. It's real simple. He that he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It's up to us to make the decision, the willful decision to act upon the greatness of God's word and the promises therein. Verse 7, every man according as he purposes in his heart. It is a heart issue. It's a heart issue in our life. You know, where is our heart? Where do we put our energy and our effort in the very seat of our personal life? We purpose in our hearts. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You know, God loves when we give out of our heart with cheerfulness. Verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I want to break this down for a few minutes because this verse is God is able and God is willing. This verse depicts that very, very clearly. God is able and he's willing. You know, God is able to make 
all grace. How much grace? All grace. And it's God's merit, unmerited divine favor. And how is that going to be? It's going to abound toward you, not just a little bit, but abound toward you that you, you know, put your name there, you know, Ed Smith. All right. You bound that you always having all sufficiency in how many things, all things may abound. And that word abound to every good work is super abound. It's abundant, abundant in quality and quantity. God is able and willing. Verse, verse eight again, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, all of it, not lacking anything, that you always having all sufficiency. All adequacy is how it's defined in the working translation. That we have all adequacy in all things. We don't get missed. And why? That we may abound to every good work. God is able and he is willing. He's always going to give us all sufficiency in all things. We may abound to every good work. What an exciting time to see God's reliability. He's not only able and willing. We can rely on God. You know, you know, then we just we just do it. You know, <laughs> God's reliable no matter what. Let's go to James. We just continue to believe it. Let's go to James chapter one. Now we're at a bound is super abound, super abound. What a God, what a father we have. Faithful. He's a faithful father. He loves us abundantly. He is able and willing, and we can rely on him. You know, yesterday I was really challenged with my health and uh, had, to, had to really grab my brain cells as far as trusting God's promise in his word, that I could get healed, that I could continue to, to be my best and not allow this sickness that was attacking me to get to me but i had to rivet my mind i had to i had to go to god and, and make it personable with with god but as we continue every day making it a habit of going to god then it's it's not a desperate hope you know we continue to have that personal relationship with god by making it a habit every day. Let's go to, let's see, chapter one, verse five of James. If any man lack, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Well, wisdom is knowledge applied. So if we have the knowledge, what do we do with it? If we don't know what to do, we just, what does it say here? If we lack wisdom, we go to God. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. God's not a slacker. He's not going to hold back. He has great abundance and he upbraideth not. He's not going to beat us over the head. We don't have to be fearful. We can continue to go to our heavenly father and it shall be given him. You know, when we ask, when we ask. So if you have a question, you have a need, we go to our Heavenly Father because He is reliable. He is trustworthy. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Again, we're continuing to look at and remind ourselves of God's reliability, that we can rely on God's reliability. Rome, uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Chapter 3, Proverbs. You know, lately I've been being reminded of how excited I was when I first got in the Word, and I want to continue to make it that way. Well, that comes from seeing the Word live, seeing it happen, seeing it function. It was great to, to know that I could pour my heart out to God and see Him heal me, you know, because I was 
I was I was getting attacked yesterday. I had a sore throat and I was tired and I was wearing out and my brain was starting to spin as far as oh my gosh, you know, I'm getting the vid, I'm getting the COVID. <laughs> but I just it was great to see God's faithfulness, that God is faithful. It's like, okay, God, it's not me, you know, and I'm not going to be prideful about, you know, I haven't been sick for a long time or whatever, you know, we can continue to go there, you know, but I don't, it was just rid my mind as to God's word because we know that it works. Verse five of chapter three in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with how much? of your heart with all of your heart again time and time again it's a heart issue god wants our heart he wants us to lean not unto our own understanding verse six in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall absolutely direct our paths we have the guidance as we act on it we do it you know but it's really easy with the five senses to do the oh yeah that's god's word but no, no, no buts, no yabbit rabbits, as it's been said in the past. No yabbit rabbits, you know, no, yeah, but, you know, that's God's word, but, but no, no, it's God's word. Put your heart into it. Get real with your heavenly father. I love this simplicity. Let's go to first John chapter five, first John chapter five. How do we get the confidence? How do we get the confidence? of God in God. Well, we're going to find out. First John chapter five. How can we have this confidence of being able to rely on our heavenly father? You know, many of us have been in the word for, for decades. Well, it can continue to be exciting as we continue to delve in and see it live. And that's a hard issue. It's, a, it's, it's you and your heavenly father going to the word, driving the word into your mind to where you believe it and act on it. And that's the key is acting on it. Verse 9, chapter 5 of 1 John. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. So where is that witness? Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues continues to remind us and prove the word. We don't have to take somebody's word for it. We can continue to have that reminder in ourselves, us and God. For this is the witness of God, which he testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. Verse 10, we're right in the middle of verse 10. He that believeth not God hath made him appear to be a liar. You know, God's not a liar, but it appears to be a liar if he doesn't believe because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Again, it's in Christ. That he, he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. When we speak in tongues, we know that we have the son. We have the Christ in us. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that you have, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hear us. And if we know that he heareth, if we know that he's listening, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. God is faithful. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. God is faithful. He is reliable. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. 
Let us hold fast the profession or the confession of our believing without wavering, without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. God is faithful that promised. He has promised us eternal life and we have the proof within ourselves that the word is true. And therefore we can continue to rely on God. And when, when we ask, we can receive from him because his, his word is faithful. He is true. Let's see what the apostles said about all this in the in their life. Let's go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6. They were challenged. They were faced with adversity. They were faced with op, op, opportunities where they could have walked away from the truth of God's word. But the apostles stood. It got real for them. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? It's a good question. I mean, it must have broken Jesus Christ's heart to see people walk away, that, that they, they, they wouldn't stay with him. So he wanted to know, are you guys going to leave too? <laughs> and I love Peter's answer here. Verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We have this word. This is God's word because he is God. <sighs> Not a God. He is God. And I want to finish in Daniel. Daniel. Ezekiel Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Verse 29. This is after everything with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we know that we're familiar with the whole story with the burning fiery furnace and in daniel chapter 3 verse 29 the nebuchadnezzar says therefore i make a decree that every people nation and language which speaketh anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego shall be cut in pieces and their homes houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no god that can deliver after this sort. God is a delivering God. And again, I want to reread this, that God's faithfulness and reliability are clear and certain realities. One of the greatest challenges we face as Christians is to believe. And as a believer is to learn the re to rely on God and his ability to do so to rely on God and to continue to rely on his ability and his reliability. Because God is, God is reliable. We know that he's reliable. We can continue to trust in him, but it takes going to the word. It takes reminding ourselves of the principles that we've heard time and time again. And yet we get challenged and, you know, people that have been in the word for, for years and years and years get talked out of it if you don't stay hot on the word if you don't keep it in your heart if you don't live it and continue that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with god i don't have to rely on anybody else to enjoy the fellowship with my heavenly father and to see the results i don't have to go to church to get answers to prayer i can just go to my heavenly father and and pour my heart out and see the rea reality, see the principles, and see him go to work in my life. And that's what I want for each and every one of you. So God bless you. Rely on God's reliability.